Hi all, welcome back to my channel. So in the last video, we have seen how to generate a preview of a form before submitting to the database and how to you know download the form in your local system. So for that, if I play this application here, when I click on download form, we have seen like there is a, uh, the print version is opening in the browser and we can easily save this document in, as a PDF in our local system. But this will not work in all the cases. Suppose there are, uh, there are uh, one application form that has many, many fields and that, has, that contains much more details uh, that is you know crossing the one page limit here. Suppose uh, you all have uh, all have uh, like 30 responses in total, and uh, you need to generate a, a PDF of the responses that has two pages. So in that case, this approach will not work because uh, here what we are doing is just we are uh, saying okay, print the print the current screen only, right? So for that, uh, this will capture only the screen that is visible to the user only. It will not take the data uh, beyond that. So it's ha it has a limitation. So in that case, we need to, you know, um, take help of the uh, our HTML and Power Automate to, you know, generate a PDF uh, that contains more than one page, right? So for that, we have one button here. So now we will configure this button and we will make it work uh, to, you know, uh, make a PDF and send it will send an email to the user with the generated PDF, right? So we will see how to do that. So for that, we need to take help from Power Automate here. So here is our Power Automate and the trigger point uh, as a trigger point, we are selecting this Power Apps. Okay, selecting power apps. No additional information is needed for this. Now the next step is we need to you know um, create some variables here. So I'm taking initialize variable. So here is my initialize variable. We need to put the name of the variable. So suppose this is the I am uh, I want to store the HTML code in this variable. So I'm saying okay, this is the HTML variable and this is the it's of a string type. And what should be the value? So I will take the value from the power apps. So I'm setting uh, like asking power apps because in the power apps we will uh, pass all the parameters there so that's why i'm taking the va uh, value of the variable from the power apps then we will uh, set a more variable initialize one more variable and uh, this is the file name and this is also a string type variable and we need to pass the parameter from the power apps here so now basically we have the file name and we have the file content actually this is the html so now we need to create one um, one file in our uh, OneDrive. So I will select uh, OneDrive. OneDrive for business. We will select this action, create file. So it's uh, signing to your account. Okay. Now it's asking to choose a folder. So I'm choosing the root. Okay. Then the file name I need to pass, right? So for the file name, okay. <laughs> So basically, we want a HTML file to store, right? So for that, we need uh, one extension like .html, correct? So that we will uh, make here. For that, we will take one another variable. Initialize variable. Um, var file full name. I will say. This is also a string. And what should be the value for the value here? We are using the expression. We are saying uh, concatenate .html extension with the file name variable here. Var file name. Okay, copy this file name, go to expression and use this concat. Now see it's expecting um, uh, to uh, the, the string to combine into a single string, right? So uh, I'm passing the variable first. I'm saying variables and what is the variable name? This is var file name and I'm saying concatenate .html with this. So I'm passing my second text as .html and it's done. I will click OK. So here we got the value as an expression. Okay, and then in the create file action, in the file name, we will we will pass the file full name variable, and in the file content here, we will pass our HTML code. Now up to that, it's clear, right? The next point is uh, this is the HTML file, and we need to convert that HTML into a PDF, right? So for that, we will again use an action, convert file. This one, convert file using path. So we will select this action. We will set the file path as root. Okay. So here in the file path, I'm uh, just uh, saying. Just a moment. Mm -hmm. It's asking for a unique path of the file, so I'm saying the path. I'm setting the path from here, from the create file action. Okay. And the target type is PDF. Yeah, of course we want to generate a PDF from the HTML, so that's it. Um, now. Let's uh, select the same email action. Yeah. 
send email um, fill an email okay um, let's get one email in my personal account okay the subject is PDF generated the body is please find the PDF attached this is the body click show advanced options here you will see the options to attach the files and everything we have attachment name and we have attachment content so in the attachments name we will say select the file name okay and in the attachment contents we will select the file content from the uh, you can see here it's it's from the convert file using path action okay so we are selecting this let's save this one let it be saved and then we will connect this power automate flow with our power apps to work now get back to the power apps here click on this request pdf button we need to change the on select logic here right so for that uh, on the top ribbon we have actions here go to actions we have power automate click on power automate and uh, you will see the uh, you know the uh, the flow that is connected to the power app so select that select this one it's saying it's being added so just wait for a few seconds and it will be added now see this has been added here now see basically this is this is the uh, this is the flow name and then on flow run what should happen we need to define that one here so now see inside this run it is expecting two value one is uh, variable two variables basically because we have initialized two variables in our flow right that is one is our html another one is our file name correct so we will pass that one so for that let's uh, make a new screen first um, let's make a new screen and uh, let's make a blank screen here okay go to insert in the input uh, let's take it as html where is that? Here we have HTML text. Select it. Basically, all our HTML code will go into this space. Okay. So just uh, remove the default text. Remove the default text, and I have already one uh, code pre uh, pre written. So I will just paste that into here. So is there any? Okay, this is one. This is fine. Okay. So I'm getting some error here. Get a single quote. Then let's see. Yeah, now it's fine. Now in the preview, we can see our HTML HTML table, right? We have the candidate name. Let me zoom in. We have candidate name, candidate email, contact number, and all the details. But this is uh, static for now. But we we want to make it as a dynamic uh, response, right? So for that, we will see how to do that. So suppose for the candidate name, candidate name, we are fetching candidate name for from which control? So we will go to our uh, screen one, and we will see that our candidate name is coming from this uh, control. Student name and the control name is um, you can see the control text input two, right? So you will simply come back to your HTML and here we have our candidate name. So instead of the static text, you will say you will say um text okay. I'm not getting this one. Let me check. Okay. So. So in the double quote, we'll say fetch the value from text input uh, one. We don't have any control named as text input one. Let's see. Um, this is the control and the name is okay this name is text input 2 so in the HTML text we are saying it's text input text input 2 dot 
text okay so now you are uh, embedding your uh, text from this control as a candidate name and same will go for all of this fields for all of this you, you can see right now i'm getting greater govin as my candidate name so uh, i will make changes for all of these controls and i will again get back to you so let's uh, wait for five seconds and i will complete those changes and i will get back to you so here um, in this it's the candidate email and uh, text input i think it is two slash one dot text um what i'm getting here yes i'm getting the email id now for the contact number for, for the contact number here it is contact input okay i just spam this contact mm, i think i will get everything by name so come to HTML text for the contact number. Um, this is the email, okay. address I'm fetching that one basically I'm uh, fetching the permanent address here only so it's permanent address input dot text then the highest degree um, so the control name must be something degree okay the degree option dot selected dot value okay and we have our uh, exam appeared exam appeared option this is also drop down option right so i'm fetching the drop down options value like this drop down control name then dot dot selected that means we are interested in fetching the value that is selected and then value and this ampersand symbol i'm using for appending the string okay in that manner concatenating two strings and the specialization follow the same approach mm, I think it's missing quotes yeah so quotes option dot selected dot value and then okay so we are done with all of our uh, controls and the, the values now let's fill the form once and we will see um, if that is working or not so uh, this is our HTML text one now we will pass this HTML code in our uh, variable here request PDF so click on this and here we will pass our HTML so for the just type here HTML text one dot HTML text and then what is the uh, what is the second variable that is your file name right so make a file name like uh, application form so in the workflow in the flow between behind what what we'll do is like the file will be saved as first application form dot html right because we have applied one logic there to concatenate the dot html extension so now we are done with it and uh, we are ready to work on it so now let's go back to the screen one play the application uh, fill the contact number here and uh, my permanent temporary is same I'm selecting my highest degree and score okay this is checked i'm going to preview and i'm requesting a pdf for this so in the behind one flow has run and uh, i must have got uh, one email notification in my personal email id so i will check that one so now let's check into our mailbox here we can see we got one email so now let's open it Let's open this PDF, and you can see all the data that we selected in our uh, 
uh, powder swarm we got all the details here listed and the advantage of this is you can make uh, as many pages as you want in this approach so you don't have any limitations for it uh, so basically in the business requirement there are the requirements like uh, where you need to show uh, many more data in the um, you know final uh, document so in that case you need to follow this approach only um, and uh, this will uh, work for the scrollable pages as well in power apps so i hope you like this video and if you really like this video if you really found this video helpful please give a thumb and don't forget to subscribe my channel till now have a good day we will see in the next video bye bye